America's great deserts are highly accessible, well-researched, and very diverse, providing a deep understanding of desert ecology. These deserts are found running down the western side of the United States and into Mexico, between the Rocky Mountains to the east and Sierra Nevada to the west. They're as tall as you right now. Oh, yeah. Actually a little taller. These things are horrible. They receive typically less than 10 inches of rain per year, so not a great place to be dehydrated, but a great place to be if you love strange stuff. The deserts in the U.S. are packed with all kinds of strangeness, from deserted designer stores to video game graveyards, a forest of automobiles to a hotel haunted by clowns. It's never dry in these parts of the desert, certainly never boring. Here are 15 of the weirdest things found in the American deserts. Number 15. Texas Desert Prada Store the middle of the wild. Texas desert isn't the usual place you'd expect to find a Prada boutique, but stop a few miles outside of Valentine, Texas, and yup, there it is. The brainchild of art duo Elm Green and Dragset, Prada Marfa was meant to be a pop architectural land art project. Built of a biodegradable substance, the building is meant to slowly melt back into the earth, serving as a surrealist commentary on Western materialism. Interesting, then, that Mucha Prada herself, the designer of the luxury brand, was consulted on the project, handpicking the merchandise for the store's interior and allowing Elm Green and Dragset to use the Prada logo. Costing a sum total of $80,000, or put another way, about 40 Prada handbags, Prada Marfsa's grand opening happened in October of 2005. While regular vandalism might be the most exciting thing that's ever happened to Prada Marfa, the site still gets thousands of visitors a year. And it's not actually a store, it's just an art piece. Some even argue that it's a trap set by aliens meant to attract potential abductees. Yet it's got some serious buzz. Celebrities such as Beyonce have even paid a visit to the lonely Prada store. You want to know a little secret? If you smash the like button, subscribe, and click the notification bell, you'll have superpowers for the rest of your life. So what are you waiting for? Time to fly! Number 14. The Ten Commandments Sphinx Archaeologists have unearthed a 94-year-old, brightly colored sphinx that once graced the set of the 1923 Hollywood blockbuster The Ten Commandments. The 300-pound sphinx was in remarkably good condition, too. The original set had pharaohs, sphinxes, and colossal temple gates that, in all, reached 12 stories high and spanned 800 feet in width. But legend has it that the director realized two things when he was done filming. The set was too expensive to move and too valuable to leave behind for rival filmmakers to steal. The dilemma was solved by having the set buried in the sand. Till now, after the newly discovered Sphinx is restored, it will be put on display on the Dune Center Museum in downtown Guadalupe. Recovery of these Hollywood artifacts is a delicate process. Unlike the Great Sphinx of Giza, which was carved by the ancient Egyptians out of bedrock, the ones built by movie makers are made from plaster of Paris, quick-setting gypsum plaster consisting of a fine white powder which hardens when moistened and allowed to dry. Known since ancient times, plaster of Paris is so called because of its preparation from the abundant gypsum found near Paris. Number 13. California City Nat Mendelssohn had a big dream a city that was going to rival Los Angeles, a Mojave desert paradise centered around a beautiful, though native to the desert and artificially watered, of course, park complete with a huge artificial lake. Seen on a map, it might seem as if perhaps Mendelssohn's dream came true. Hundreds of miles of named streets cut through the desert area known as California City, ending in cul-de-sacs and looking much like a large suburban community had been built. California City can lay claim to being the third largest city in California and 34th largest in the nation. However, on closer inspection, one quickly notices something missing. Houses. There is absolutely nothing lining these streets. No houses, no electric grid, nothing. The roads form an empty ghost grid, a mirage of suburbia still waiting to be filled. Seen from above, it looks almost like the remnants of some ancient culture. This was the place where water use went up the most. There's hardly a green lawn in sight. 
But California City isn't entirely empty. As of 2008, the city has a total population of 14,556. It was a master planned community created in the post-World War II boom years with grand aspirations that failed to grow. Number 12, Desert Christ Park. This Christian-themed park near Joshua Tree is the brainchild of the late Reverend Eddie Garver, who envisioned the attraction as a symbol for world peace. In 1950, the U.S. government helped Garver realize his dream and granted the desert pastor five acres on the desert. Over the next 10 years before his death in 1961, Martin created more than 35 statues from plaster, steel, and concrete, including a three-story, 125-ton base relief of The Last Supper. A window was installed behind Christ's head, along with a platform for visitors to stand on and pose with the Savior. Sadly, over the years, the park has fallen into disrepair. The 1992 earthquake in nearby landers knocked off hands, feet, and heads, exposing creepy, steely skeletons. Limited funding and wanton neglect also took their toll, mostly noticeable on the young blessing of the children figures, which were missing limbs and faces. But fans of the park weren't merely praying for salvation. They've started a foundation to restore the Dusty Disciples, and they have faith that their efforts will lead to the park's complete resurrection. As of late 2019, the park is almost fully restored, and the sculptures return to their former glory. Number 11 the New Mexican Atari Landfill. In September of 1983, in the middle of the night, over a dozen trucks were driven to a landfill in Amagordo, New Mexico, and their contents were emptied. Everything was buried and concreted, and that should have been that, but it wasn't, and a few days later, some curious treasure hunters arrived and found some Atari ET video games. Word got out. The product had been released to much fanfare the previous December, but had gained a reputation as a stinker. Now, here in New Mexico, as legend began to have it, were millions of these ET games unsolved, unsold, and underground. Since the burial was first reported to the press, there have been doubts as to its veracity and scope, leading to it being frequently dismissed as an urban legend. In either case, the event had become a cultural icon and a reminder of the North American video game crash in 1983. In 2014, some corporations banded together and others worked with the New Mexico government to excavate the site to validate the contents of the landfill. The excavation revealed discarded games and hardware. Only a small fraction, about 1,300 cartridges, were recovered during the major recovery with a portion given for curation and the rest auctioned to raise money for a museum. How bad could that E.T. video game actually have been? Number 10. Hard Luck Mine Castle A doomsday castle in the Nevada desert with its very own gold mine could be the perfect place to ward off the zombie apocalypse. Looks like it, right? The modern-day castle, which reportedly cost more than $3 million to build and was created for self-sustainability, a doomsday luxury getaway, a survivalist paradise. The property, a total of 40 acres of land in Goldfield, Nevada, is equipped with the Hard Luck Mine, which was utilized from 1897 until around World War II, still has a functioning 160-foot mine shaft. The fort is located about 187 miles from Las Vegas and was built with superior engineering to last 400 to 500 years. Randy Johnston purchased the land in 1998 and constructed the four-story, 8,000-square-foot building with a total of 22 rooms in the main building. Built with 16-inch walls, a 4,000-gallon water catchment system, and powered with wind and solar, the castle allows for self-sustainability. It comes with a wine cellar, theater, and casino game room, auto and wood shops, a large fountain, four bedrooms, three full baths, and two kitchens, and two functioning pipe organs. With Death Valley nearby, the property is equipped with solar panels and utilizes wind energy. Number 9. The Arizona Desert Arrows Consumers today expect their deliveries to arrive within a few days, or even hours, through services available online. But delivering mail cross-country wasn't always so easy. They had to develop some innovative ways because they didn't have the fancy navigational systems that developed later with GPS that we have today. So how did pilots find their way? 
really big arrows. The U.S. government installed concrete arrows scattered across the country, from New York to San Francisco. Arizona state historian Marshall Trimble said it did the job. They really reduced the time down to about 30 hours. They could get the mail across the country. The arrows were from 50 to 75 feet and painted bright yellow so pilots could see them from the sky. The government later added beacons alongside those arrows. Painted Beacon 29 that guided pilots from New York to San Francisco. The beacons would project light for an extremely long way at night. Prior to this system, the trips took several days by train. However, the system didn't last long. Trumbull said that the start of World War II was partly to blame. Now most of these light towers are long gone and the arrows lie abandoned. Some visible on Google Maps. Number 8. International Car Forest of the Last Church the product of artists Chad Sorg and Mark Rippey. The car forest began when Sorg saw a car standing on its nose in the sand. Intrigued, the artist found that it was the work of Rippey, and by 2011, Sorg had moved to the city to help Rippey expand their forest. Today, over 40 automobiles, including cars, trucks, and vans, have been balanced delicately on their ends or stacked on top of another. Looking like a group of toys, some giant baby simply left lying about, each of the junked cars has also been uniquely painted with designs, varying from skulls to caricatures of politicians. There's no sign explaining or naming the work, but its official name, the International Car Forest of Last Church, was given to it by Rippy. The International Car Forest in Goldfield, which is partially Cadillac Ranch and Carhenge, is now part of the automotive zeitgeist because of its unique car installations. It's not something that one usually stumbles upon. It's a destination most automobile art admirers long to visit and is an inspiration for all. What an interesting addition to the desert. Number 7. Silver Peak Lithium Mine Anyone who uses a smartphone, tablet, cordless power tool, or even an electric car knows the device would not operate without the almighty battery. The popularity of these gadgets is a big reason for growth in the lithium industry. However, the only active lithium mine in North America is in Silver Peak, Nevada. The tiny Esmeralda County town is about 30 miles west of Goldfield. The mine currently produces 3,500 metric tons of lithium per year, with the capability to produce 6,000 metric tons. The salty groundwater is pumped to the surface in the Clayton Valley and captured in a series of ponds that cover 4,100 acres. As the water evaporates, some of the salts and minerals settle on the ground and the lithium concentration gets higher. After the water goes through the series of pools and the solution is at the right level, it's pumped to the processing plant. It takes 18 to 24 months from the time the water is pumped to the surface until the lithium carbonate is produced. The lithium carbonate is shipped from the Silver Peak mine to King Mountain, North Carolina, where it's converted to lithium hydroxide. From there, it's sold to companies who use it to manufacture batteries and battery packs. It's kind of crazy that this one mine is behind all the world's lithium. Number 6. The Clown Motel What do you do with a collection of 2,000 clown figurines? Well, the story goes as follows. Haim Anand went to the circus in his native India. The then 14-year-old, terrified by the tigers, the massive elephants, left after 15 minutes. The next day, a friend convinced him to give it another shot. It scared him again until suddenly a clown appeared and transformed the audience's gasps into laughter. He was hooked. From that day on, he started collecting clowns. He packed up his beloved clown figurines and moved to Vegas where his family owns two motels. When he wasn't pulling 10-hour shifts at work, he used his marketing expertise to help the family business. It came easily to him, so much so that his brother offered to buy him a hotel of his own one where the clowns would have a home too. It was named America's Scariest Motel due to its clown theme. Many people are terrified of the clown motel, and yeah, it's kind of freaky. Some of the murals in the rooms are sure to give guests nightmares, but don't worry, there are also happy clowns, especially in the lobby. People from all over the world send clowns to the clown motel and the collection now numbers 2,050. Is that too many? Nah. Number 5. Tumbleweed Town 
Ever seen the tumbleweed invasion in Victorville, California? It happened in a remote city northeast of Los Angeles, best known for being on the freeway from LA to Las Vegas. It's attracted national attention after images of homes buried under the rolling dry weeds have gone viral all over social media. Authorities blamed wind gusts of up to 60 miles per hour for blowing the dry weeds into neighborhoods where as many as 150 homes were affected by the invasion. Some homes were so buried in tumbleweeds that residents called 911 for help. They struck Victorville with little warning, rolling and tumbling up streets, barreling past cars. However, tumbleweeds are no strangers to many parts of California and a few other states like Texas and Kansas, and they can be seen rolling across roads or stuck in fences. Victorville, a high desert community northeast of Los Angeles, is routinely buffeted by the weeds. However, 60 mile per hour winds unleashed an unusually big swarm this time. It was all over social media. Attack of the Killer Tomato sequel, one commenter tweeted. Mother Earth is not happy, said another. But we're happy no one was hurt during the tumbleweed terror. Number 4. Titan Missile Museum the Titan Missile Museum offers a very cool experience. It's located in the Arizona desert, a bleak setting that feels like a good fit for a nuclear missile silo and was the largest nuclear missile silo in the continental United States until it was decommissioned in 1982 by Ronald Reagan. Inside the silo, you can get a really good look at a missile that was used for training exercises. The control room and the living quarters in a place that was designed to withstand a direct attack from a multi-megaton nuclear blast. But this is no science fiction. The culmination of the tour of this attraction is a simulated launch complete with secret codes and two-key ignition, a countdown, and a blast-off. The nuclear winter, resulting fallout, and post-apocalyptic aftermath is left to your imagination. Sitting deep within the chambers of one of the most destructive devices ever created by man is a much more frightening experience than any haunted house, but a must-see for sure. Number 3. Chloride Ghost Town The Chloride Ghost Town was founded in 1862 with the discovery of silver ore. During its heyday, there were more than 75 mines in operation, and the population reached 2000 in 1920. Today, there are still a few mines in operation, but Chloride looks elsewhere for prosperity. Located just a stone's throw away from the deteriorating town of Santa Claus, Chloride seems to resemble any kooky Wild West village. But if you look a little deeper, you'll find something that makes the ghost town stand out, a wonderfully bizarre collection of junk art and a display of giant murals. In science, Chloride is an ion used to desalinate seawater into drinking water which is ironic because the Arizona town of the same name is incredibly dry. The local miners excavated minerals like silver, gold, and turquoise for over six decades, until in the late 1920s when the town was burnt to the ground in near entirety. But in the 1940s, it had practically become a ghost town completely. Now chloride is making a comeback, thanks to tourism. With new attractions like mock gunfights, Arizona's oldest post office, and the world's only all-female gunfighting troupe, it's your chance to walk through an original Wild West town. Number 2. Pioneer California is a strange but wonderful place. Built as a film set in the 1940s by Hollywood movie makers, its main feature is a four-block long Main Street as opposed to America's most usual main streets, with spaghetti western-style edifices built at two-thirds scale, set back on a wide, dusty road. There's just one catch. Unlike other film sets, where you knock on walls to find their paper mache Pioneer Town was built to double as a real living town, just one that looks like it's located in the Wild West. Located on a short two-hour ride out of Los Angeles, it's a tiny little desert town that looks frozen in the 19th century. The saloons, trading posts, and other frontier storefronts were used as backdrops in a number of early Western serials, from the Cisco Kid to Judge Roy Bean. Given the fact and prolific production schedules of the televised adventures, the set was soon expanded to accommodate real residences where the actors could live. The construction of the town was funded and overseen by such Western greats as actors Roy Rogers and Russell Hayden. Epic Hollywood Facts Number 1 rocks of Bonnie Claire Dry Lake. Perhaps the strangest feature in America's deserts is the mysterious rocks of Bonnie Claire Dry Lake in Death Valley, where rocks drift across the flat surface landscape, seemingly defying gravity. Known as sailing stones, the rocks vary in size from a few ounces to hundreds of pounds. 
Though no one has ever seen them actually move in person, the trail left behind the stones and periodic changes in their location make it clear that they are, in fact, moving across the playa. In 2014, scientists were unable to capture the movement of the stones for the first time using time-lapse photography. The results strongly suggest that the sailing stones are because of a perfect balance of ice, water, and wind, leaving behind trails as long as 1,500 feet. And once, a 700-pound block they named Karen, which didn't move at all while being studied, was entirely missing when researchers returned years later. It was over a half mile from the survey site. One of Death Valley's most enduring mysteries has been solved by what one researcher called the most boring experiment ever. We disagree. Those were the 15 weirdest things found in the American deserts. Thanks for watching.